Hi everyone, as usual at the end of the year, and believe me, it's the end of the year. I mean, I hate the winter. It's about 3 p.m. and it's essentially dark outside and it is raining, but it's besides the point, I don't like it. I've left filming a bit late in the day today and I kind of regret it. So excuse the artificial lighting and the shadows. Um, yeah, it's the uh, drawbacks of living in a cold, dark country. But anyway, I wanted to sit down today and talk about the best books that I read this year. So not the best books of 2022, as in published this year, just things that I read in the eclectic mix of things that I read. Now, if you watched my reading wrap up, which I think maybe was about a month ago, um, in that video, I, <laughs> I talked about my reading slump. And this year I have read so far 20 books. I think it will be 21 because um, the book I'm reading right now, I think I will finish before, uh, before the end of the year. Um, and normally I'd read about 50 books, so it is not very much for me. But anyway, I, if you didn't watch that video, it's just this year has been a lot. Basically, um, I had a huge book project that I hadn't anticipated at all, Secret Seagrass Meadows, which I published in September. That kind of came out of nowhere and was such a lot of work, loads of fun, but it was really fast paced and a lot to do. I also um, started working as a teacher, so I was doing supply work as well. Um, we moved, <laughs> as well as like post-pandemic, kind of getting on my feet again with the business. And it's just, it's been an awful lot. So I haven't had the time. And I think when you, when you get out of the habit of reading, it sort of snowballs. So I, I haven't in general read very much this year. But of the 21 books, I've got three five star reads because the one I'm reading right now, I like it, but it won't be a five star. So yeah, three books of 21 I rated as five stars on Goodreads. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. They're completely different from each other. Um, and so if you're looking for a good book and one of these strikes your fancy, then give it a read. So the first book this year, and I'll link these on bookshop.org below and all of the books that I've read this year. I get a small commission if you order through that link, but if you're just looking for information, then it's below. Um, anyway, so in reverse order from most recent backwards, um, I recently read How to Be a Dad by Dr. Oscar Duke. Now, if you'd have laid out the books that I was going to read this year and said, which will be five stars, I wouldn't have picked this one out. This was a book that a friend got from a charity shop because she wondered what I would think about it. And so it wasn't something I picked out. And I've previously read books and sort of leaflets and websites that are aimed at partners and I often find them a bit condescending. And this book absolutely wasn't. And that's why I gave it five stars. So. Basically, it is just a guide to everything. So pregnancy, birth, after the baby's born, and it is super evidence-based. And that's another reason why I gave it five stars. Dr. Oscar Duke, as his name suggests, is a doctor. So he's put loads of medical and scientific information in there, but it's totally accessible. He's also added his own experience. And I always love that. That's why I wrote Milk that way is because I think someone's experience and their own story just adds to what you're saying. And you can give someone all the facts and they can do what they want with it. And I just think that sharing experience shows that. So it, it was just really well put together and had stuff in it that I hadn't seen before, such as um, a big section on genetic testing and genetic counselling, which was just really interesting. And I just, yeah, I really, I, I thought there was great content in there. I thought it was in no way condescending. It was just really respectful and it was accessible. And I had so much good to say about it. The only criticism I could give that book is that it could have been how to be a partner or how to be a good parent, maybe. Not that it doesn't say good, how to be a parent. 
maybe and to be more um more inclusive in that way and it's not like in the book it's lots of like dads you know it definitely could have just had the language changed to partner and would have been completely accessible and for that reason I don't I think that if you can overlook that this book is totally a good read for a partner or for someone who is having a baby because for me I could have put aside okay I'm the birthing parent and you know put that to one side and just read it for the sake of the information so yeah that's my only criticism is that the that language could have been changed and this would have been a totally inclusive book and you know it's yeah but other than that it's just a really really great guide to everything that a partner needs to know without putting them off because my husband if he read something that was all like beer and cars and tits it's like it's just like he would just instantly be like no and I think <laughs> I think most people would it's just like not it's not how we talk now right so um yeah, I really loved that it was just here. Are, here is some information, and here's what you can do with it. And great, brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, I gave it five stars because I just haven't seen a something aimed at a partner done that well. So aside from it could be more inclusive, it it's excellent. So um, yeah, I really thought that was very good. Second book of this year that I gave five stars to is The Right Way to Die by Joe Bavington Jones. Now, Joe is a local author and a friend of mine. We met through a mutual acquaintance about, well, I was in the process of publishing Milk, so four or five years ago, I guess. And so we've stayed in touch and sort of followed each other's you know publishing experiences and we go we sort of are in similar author circles so sometimes we're at author author events together and generally we'll try and be together we we share a similar sense of humor we have a right laugh together in fact she um <laughs> put an experience of us at an author event in a recent anthology which I have here called Out of Sync I'll link that below as well we both wrote pieces but hers um is is me and her at an event anyway I've seen her selling this book at numerous events and thought it sounded really good and hadn't got around to reading it so at last I did and this has to be her bestseller. It, when I'm at events with her, it's she is selling this book like crazy. And if you're an author, particularly if you're an author in Kent, but an author in general, I think this is so fun. The concept is somebody who is in a writing group and they um, it, it goes through the pandemic and she wrote it during the pandemic. And so um, this writer's group meet in a pub and then they end up online and they all decide to write their perfect murder because they're having a discussion about, you know, writing a murder in a believable way. And so that there aren't any like holes in the plot of, you know, how the body is dealt with or whatever. Um, and so each member of the writing group writes a murder and those murders are all written with a really individual voice. It's really well done. They're all very different. They all have different tones and it's all set around Folkestone. So if you know Folkestone and you know the artworks, um, it's really fun that... <laughs> It seems weird to say that it's fun, but it is, you know, it's creatively done around the art, um, not exhibitions, installations around Folkestone. Um, and then it sort of turns darker. She's just done such a good job with it. It's funny, it's dark, it's really creative. If you're looking for something that is light but with a darkness, it's it's great. I really recommend, you don't have to be a writer to enjoy it, but if you are a writer, I think the writing group aspect of it and the different writers, is it just adds like a dimension when you've met people who, who are like that, you know? 
So yeah, it's I really enjoyed um, The Right Way to Die by Joe Babington Jones. And then the, the third one on my list, and this was way back at the start of the year, is After the End by Claire McIntosh. And I'd completely forgotten about this book until I looked on Goodreads and I was like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed this. So this um, is something entirely, uh, blah, 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 entirely different again. So in this book, there's a couple and they have a very ill son. I think he has a brain tumour, I think. And what happens is that um, they're given a choice of whether to, um, you know, continue to support this child's uh, continued life or whether to withdraw the life supporting care. And there's a, um, it ends up with the parents having a court case against each other because they disagree. It's obviously really emotional, but I, I really enjoy Claire McIntosh's writing. I definitely recommend you read any of her books. She's ex-police and so there's often like a crime, they're, they're like thriller crime type books, but this one, um, she had a very poorly child and so it's based on lived experience too and I think that that sort of that that contributes to the rawness it was just so beautifully written and she's a fantastic writer anyway but this sort of really stood out um, and I loved I sometimes think when I say like loved or enjoyed it seems off but I, the, the legal side of it is not something I would have even thought about and to sort of, I suppose, learn about and reflect on the that impact for families and what people might be going through beyond the actual dealing with the situation, if that makes sense. Um, it's just beautifully written, heartbreaking, um, I yeah I just thought it really stood out as just such a stunning work and all of her books that I have read are fantastic but this one was just like wow when I when I read it so that was why this one was five stars so yeah totally different something quite serious something quite funny and a non-fiction but there we are um goodness knows what I will read in 2023 I'm, I'm thinking of setting a goal to read more about sort of business and writing and sort of more that will, will contribute to my work, maybe more around teaching too, just yeah, more kind of that kind of stuff, I don't know, um, but I'll be doing my goals reviewing and setting video in the next couple of weeks, so yeah, something to look forward to. Anyway, um, if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and don't forget to subscribe for more videos about books and writing and other things. And I'll see you all again soon. Take care.